All right, everyone, you better strap on your seat belts and sit tight because this is going to be the ultimate tier one guide of Imperial Dramon deck for the BT8 format. Hello Digimon players and fans, welcome back to another Digimon deck profile and in-depth building guide video. And at this time, we've probably gone through several big official Bandai tournaments already and we all can learn that this deck is one of the strongest tier 1 decks of the BTA format. After these big tournaments, I've been keeping an eye on many different variations of how people play the deck, how they build it differently, and what sort of list that topped with very interesting tech cards as well. And during this period of time, I've been playtesting day and night so that I can create this comprehensive guide for all of you, and I want to go into as much detail as I can. I generally prefer consistent performance with all the decks that I played, so my build is actually very standard when you see the list compared to all the other ones you see out there. However, this is when I want to cover a lot more than just that. I will actually be including all the different tech cards that I've seen other players play that got really good results. The overall idea is to help you guys get a bit more information so you guys can make the best decision for yourself in which tech cards you guys prefer and adapt it to your style of play. I will also be showcasing two key basic combos of this deck to help you guys learn and play as well. So definitely stick around for that. Now, if you're new to the Digimon card game and this is like your very first time, I would actually recommend you to check out my starter deck guide video for Imperial Dramon first. I will include the link in the description box down below. And if you guys are also interested in a general budget build, that video would also be for you. But before we get started, I got another question for you. Have you subscribed yet? Well, if you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? We got lots of Digimon videos and content on the channel, so you definitely want to subscribe right now and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned for more of those videos. Also, be sure to give this video a like as it really helps. Now, let's dive right into the deck profile. Like we always do, let's get in with the Digi Eggs first. First off, we have the four copies of Demi Vmon from BT3. And then we have the one Upamon from BT1. Demi Vmon is one attacking once per turn. If the Digimon attacking has jamming, you get to draw one. There's a whole lot of jamming in this deck. We're always consistently looking to do jamming and always triggering the jamming. So then we can draw one with Demi V. And then we have the one copy of Upamon where if we do attack uh, with a Digimon and there's an opponent's Digimon with no sources, we get to draw one as well. Like I mentioned, drawing is just so crucial. And the reason why I want to play five eggs is because this deck actually does cycle through your eggs fairly quickly. It is Imperial, you're rushing a lot, and there are times that you're going to need the five eggs. However, you guys really, really consider or prefer consistency, just play the four Demi V mods instead. But Upamon works great as well as an addition. So that's the eggs right here. Rookies. It's basically all about V mods. We first off have the four copies of the brand new vmon right here from the starter deck this is the one that i've been waiting for because this one is basically the best vmon it searches your top three for a free digimon with free in its traits and yeah being able to grab one of anything you're going to be hitting things very very consistently and very likely and yeah what else i gotta say you gotta maximize that four copies with this guy right here next up we have the ex1 vmon right here this one's the altar just so you guys know this one is once per turn your turn when this digimon becomes unsuspended you get to gain a memory there's a lot of unsuspension going on with blue and imperial in general so and by doing so gaining the memory off of those effects gives us so much more potential to make more plays and more combos and basically play more cards so yeah four copies is a must as well for this one so for the next Vmon, we also got another starter deck Vmon. This one is from the All Force Vmon starter deck. And we mainly play for its inheritable only because when attacking, if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, you get to trigger to draw one card. And this is a really good early game draw power engine for you to really get your cards uh, as quickly as possible. It does have a main effect allowing you to warp Digivolve into Oak Force Vigimon as long as your opponent has a level 6. However, we don't play in this deck at all. But if you guys want to tech that in just for spiciness, I definitely recommend you guys give it a try and let me know in the comments too. So that's it for this Vmon right here. And then lastly to round up for our Vmons, we got the two BT3 
jamming vmons right here this one works very well with your demi vmon to draw one so you can get some early game uh chip damage right here and also makes it a little bit problematic for your opponent to deal with that they have to address this card because this card is just very strong on its own but two copies is really all you need in this deck so that'll be it for our rookie lineup with all our vmons and now let's move into our level fours level fours let's first off show you guys the four copies of X Vmon in EX1. He has jamming and he also has inheritable giving you jamming. That's really all he does. He's the great early game uh, chipper as well, uh, similar to the Vmon that we uh, showcased earlier from the rookie lineup. Next, we have the four copies of Stingmon. This one is extremely important because it combos with your X Vmon to DNA into your Paeldramon. And I will go in more depth later once we get into the combo segment. However, Stingmon can reduce its play cost by one as long as you have a blue Digimon in play, making it a three drop, which is which is really fantastic. And it has a inheritable where when attacking, if you have a blue Digimon in play, draw one. Keep in mind, this one is also not once per turn. So Stingmon is your powerhouse when it comes to giving you even more draw power and drawing cards overall. So that's X Vmon and Stingmon together. We still got more level fours to go through. So let's show you guys Lydramon right here. Lydramon, we mainly play it because of its dual color of being green and blue, which is plays a really important role in this deck because we need to utilize as many of those as possible where it will link and correlate to another uh, Tamer card, which we're gonna be talking about in a bit, but most of you guys will already know. Uh, Armor Purge is great sometimes. We don't really use it that often. There's often enough times we're actually digivolving this card in the raising area. Uh, and also has when digivolving, you get to spend one of your opponents level four lower Digimon, uh, giving you a little bit of a control aspect in the early game if you want to swing over smaller things as well. Uh, but yeah, that's Lydramon three copies right there. And then last but not least to round up for the level fours, we have the one Lobomon for game. I originally really wanted to have two. Uh, just for like sort of like being able to see a little bit more often so we can actually go for that game when we need to. However, um, after playtesting more, I realized this deck actually doesn't really heavily function too much on Lobomon. It can, Lobomon is really just an extra bonus. And the other thing is that this deck space is really, really tight. So you're going to have to give up something to play an extra Lobomon, but that will also up your champion count. And I wouldn't even touch the four XB Mons, the four Sting Mons, nor the three Lydra Mons. I would not decrease any numbers of those and you want to keep up with consistency but you know Lobomon's right there is just just there uh for you if in situations that you do get it and like i mentioned there's a lot of draw power in this deck you're very likely to get him and you only need one ever so that's it for the level fours and let's talk about the level fives now level fives i would say this is like the boss digimon probably the star of the deck because this is what it really revolves all on the Pale Jamon right here, the level 5 from the starter deck one. This card is just absolutely insane, incredibly powerful. You always want to be DNA Digivolving with a blue and a green, uh, placing the blue on top. And then when you do DNA Digivolve, you can bottom deck a 6,000 DP or less Digimon of your opponents. And yeah, and basically send it back to the bottom. And bottom decking is, I would argue, one of the best removals in this game. Because it's better than trashing, it's actually even better than deleting... Uh, and it's even better than bouncing back to their hand because bottom decking means they can't access that card anymore other than cycling it back. This is why Peljamon is uh, really, really good with its uh, removal effect. And then when attacking, once per turn, you can unsuspend this Digimon where you will get to do a lot of crazy combos with our inheritables with this card. And once again, yeah, definitely stay tuned and stick around for that combo. But Peljamon, four of 100% and do not play less. Next up, I play two Dino Bmons. This one's uh, very similar to Peljamon, uh, also DNA Digivolving. However, this time you need the green and blue level four, uh, stacking your green at the top instead. When Digivolving though, generally, you can suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. And if it's when DNA Digivolved, that suspended Digimon does not unsuspend during the next uh, unsuspend phase of your opponent's turn, which is really, really good because it can give you a little bit of a control aspect, slow it down a little bit, and uh you know control the momentum which is really nice and it has a pretty neat inheritable giving your digimon extra thousand dp for each of its colors your top end is usually a dual color so meaning it can gain two thousand dp which is really really good and yeah that's dino beam on two copies is just enough though so that's it for the level fives let's move into the level sixes once again starter deck stuff we got the dragon mode imperial dragon mode uh this one is 
really nice because it allows you to go wide. When Digivolving, you can play one level four or lower Digimon card and one level four or lower green Digimon card underneath underneath this Digivolution sources back and really bridges and helps you go wide with your combos and can play more and go really insane and go nuts off basically. But two copies is just enough because we do have another two copies of Fighter Mode right here. Fighter Mode is also just an insanely good card. First off, you can Digivolve for two only on top of a dragon mode and uh you normally will digivolve for five on top of a blue or green which gives you the versatility because you can go straight from a level five into this guy or you can go into dragon mode first and then pay a bit less and get a little bit more value from there he does quite a bit of things because when digivolving you get to bounce one of your opponent's digimon that is a thousand dp or less back to their hand first but also when attacking if you have a blue and it's sources you can unsuspend this guy if you have green in the sources you can suspend one of your opponent's guys keep in mind when playing this card you can't suspend your opponent's digimon with its effect and then say you're attacking into that suspended digimon you have to swing first into something and declare what you're swinging at and then choose to suspend one of your opponent's digimon meaning that if you do have a blue and green as source you can basically swing into security first suspend one of your opponent's digimon unsuspend this guy and then the next attack, you can then attack into that suspended Digimon. So that's something that you just want to keep in mind when playing this card so you don't misplay with. But yeah, that's fighter mode right here. And that's it for our level sixes. Let's move into our Tamers. Tamers, three copies of Davis. Davis is your searcher. It's your memory Tamer. I want to maximize like, not at four, but three is a really good amount. Uh, so you can see it often enough and, you know, just keep up with consistency with searching as well, basically. And then for our new dual Tamer, for dedicated for Imperial, we have Davis and Ken. Davis and Ken gives you one extra memory at the start of your main phase if you have a blue Digimon, and then if you have a green Digimon as well, you gain another memory, giving you two memory per turn when you do fulfill those conditions is really, really good. This is the reason why you want to play Lydramon and max out the dual colors as many as you can. The other effect is your turn, when one of your Digimon digivolves into a two color Digimon, you can suspend this Tamer and unsuspend that Digimon. So you can do some really crazy combos with it as well. And we're going to showcase that when we get into the combo segment. And it's really wild. You can do crazy amount of checks uh, just by having uh, Davis and Ken both on the board. But that's it for our Tamers. Let's talk about the options. We actually play quite a decent amount of options in this deck. We have the four copies of Hammer Spark, first of all. This one's the alt art, just so you guys know. Hammer Spark is just always Hammer Spark doing Hammer Spark things. Gaining the two memory in security is fantastic. Ending your opponent's turn, ending your opponent's plays. I would always maximize that four. For zero cost, you gain a memory, allowing you to make more plays. And then we also have the one ice wall right here, which is also your other defensive uh, capability card similar to Ice Wall from security gain two memory which is really strong but also mainly there's a reason why this card is limited to one because once you play it it stops your opponent from being able to swing into you for a whole turn because every time they do so they have to pay two memory to do that and yeah that's the five uh, I guess Ice Wall Hammer Spark combinations right here now we also have two Mega Deaths this is moving into more of our removal option right here. This is our only really main source of removal. This card is just really, really clutch in security because it bounces one of your opponent's uh, Digimon. Mainly, it suspends one of your opponent's Digimon. Then you bounce one suspended Digimon back to their hand. For five costs, it's just extremely cheap because this is basically budget Kokaida's Breath. And yeah, it's just that good. Then we have one hidden potential discovered. Since we're playing green stuff, blue and green, now we can accommodate with the really powerful green cards in this deck. And HPD, there's a reason why this card is also at one. We're playing both limited cards, Ice Wall and HPD in this deck, where we're really utilizing the best cards in both colors. What HPD does is the next time when one of your green Digimon would Digivolve this turn, you can suspend one of your Digimon to reduce the cost of the Digivolution by five. And you can do a whole lot of crazy stuff with just this one card and it will basically give you a huge boost in momentum and advantage all of a sudden in just one single turn. And I'll show you guys when we get into the combo once again. And last but not least, to round off for our 
uh, options where I like to have one blue memory boost just for extra searching and a bit of extra memory as well and that basically wraps up for all the options and the entire deck now that we've got the deck profile completed you guys can sort of see my build is very very standard and very basic and the reason why I want to show you guys this and like I mentioned earlier in the video is because there's a lot of really cool tech cards you can be adding in into Imperial. I don't want to be showcasing you guys like five different iterations and five different variations of this deck. So I want to include this special segment right here of all the other really cool tech cards that you can consider to add into this deck so you guys can make your own decisions and play test to your own assumptions and and possibly add these cards into your deck by swapping for other cards and play with the ratios to see what you're most comfortable with to suit your play style. So let's talk about more Vmons. This Vmon right here is from BT8. This one searches for a double color blue Digimon when on play, revealing the top four of your deck. This one, I don't feel like is very necessary. We do play double dual colors. However, we have enough searching generally and we have so much draw power, we actually don't need to be searching as much. And the only downside to this card is really, sometimes you might be bottom decking some of your really crucial cards when you could actually just be drawing them from your other effects anyways. So that, this is the reason why I don't want to play this Vmon generally. Next up for another Vmon, we got this Vmon right here. This one is once per turn, your turn when you unsuspend during your main, you get to draw a card. Even more draw power, it combos very nicely. And I would actually suggest that if you guys want to play this one instead, I would swap out the All Force Vmon starter deck ones. You always have to have seven cards or less in your hand and eventually you're going to be maximizing your cap and it's inheritable is no longer going to be uh, relevant because you can't use it anymore and it basically becomes a vanilla however this one offers you a bit more of a mid game slash late game uh consistency so that you're always drawing there's no caveat you know as long as you unsuspend you get to draw and so it really depends on which guy which one you guys prefer do you guys like early game draw power or do you guys like the uh, late game payoff it's entirely up to you so that's the other vmons that we like to talk about so for the next rookie we have one madoki betamon right here madoki betamon just shuts off memory gaining and madoki betamon is actually very decent against the mirror match with lots of imperial Dramons decks uh, running around you're often enough going to be seeing a lot of hammer sparks as well you want to shut off their memory shut off their boost shut off their gaining memory with unsuspension vmons as well and it just does really really good and the worst feeling you can ever get is if you have a full combo that you can go for a game and sadly you hit into a hammer spark and that just takes out your combo that goes for a game and then you lose the game that way so madoki betamon is really really good in that sense not only that it's really good against yellow hybrid uh, aside from the dp reduction but it's very good to counter the memory boost options that they're always playing. They're going to be playing a lot of those and this shuts it off. As well as it's also really good against Black X Antibody because they gain a lot of memory with various effects as well. And it's not the easiest for them to remove Madoki Betamon in a general sense. So that's one thing I would also consider adding if you guys would like. Uh, for another level 4 armor, we have one Magnamon. Uh, or you can play two, whichever you like. I would not go more than two, but Magnamon is really, really good because you play a lot of Vmons, so you're always digivolving it for three. It has blocker, a 7k blocker that's level four is really strong, and it stops a lot of early chip damage, especially against the mirror match ones again. You'll stop the jamming Vmons, your opponent won't want to swing with it. It'll stop the X Vmons and slow it down. So Magnamon is a really good inclusion if you want to play a little bit more of a control style and hold it there as well. Not only that, when did when did you evolve it? You can unsuspend him so you can do more aggressive checks if you want to. And it can gain DP depending on how much armor you have in your trash. So Magnamon is a very, very viable consideration to be adding in. Next up, for more controlling aspects, there's another level 5 that you can play instead of Dino Beamon, where we have Chimeramon. Chimeramon, like I mentioned in so many of my videos, it's so splashable in any deck. You can add it in any deck and it'll just work. And instead of going into Peljamon or Dino Beamon, I would play two Chimeramons and swap out the two Dino Beamons instead. With the two Chimeramons, you can actually do a lot of cool things. First, DP reduce your opponent's stuff and potentially you can delete a whole lot of rookies on their board, which is really great. But you also get to add extra sources to give even more inheritables to build into your top end later on. And then Chimera Mon just becomes really, really insane from that. And yeah, you can do a lot of crazy combos with it too. Now for some of the level six, I got one Nidhogmon 
as a tech. Nidhogg can clear wide boards and switch the whole momentum over back into your favor just by having this card. And it's very easy to get into, especially when you're DNA digivolving, you can always be digibursting four very easily. And you place all your opponent's suspended Digimon back to the bottom of the deck. Once again, like I mentioned, bottom of the deck is so good, along with everything that is 5,000 DP or less as well. Another example why Nidhogg is so good is, let's talk about Mirror Match again. Often enough, your opponent may end, end the turn with a Dragon Mode that is suspended, along with an XVmon and a Stingmon, ready to go at you again the next turn. And all you have to do is put a Nidhogg down, and you bottom deck their entire three cards there, right there, and it's gone. Just like that. And you can, that can basically be day and night, and you could just win, just for, simply just by playing this one card. So this is why Nidhogg is a very good consideration. Next up for level 7s, Blitz Omni. I originally liked, really liked running this card. Omnimon can come in real clutch situations when you do have it in your hand. You can top it off. It's sometimes, arguably, even better than Lobo. And you can do crazy amount of swings and then top off with Omnimon for game. And your opponent can't even see it coming and they can't do anything about it. So that splits Omni as well. Now, we got Paladin Mode. This is kind of controversial because you got to be have a very unique play style and preference to in order to actually put this card in your, in your deck. I already talked about how tight space is with level 7s. Me personally, I don't like this card in the deck at all. However though, when digivolving or when attacking, you can return one two color card from this Digimon's sources to the bottom owner's deck to trash all of the Digivolution cards of one of your opponent's Digimon, and then return all your opponent's Digimon with no sources to the bottom of their deck as well in any order. Really, really good. Also very similar idea to Nidhogg, but a more expensive version. However, it does pay off because you can do it again and again as long as you have do double color sources to pay for it. And not only that, it has 16k DP, being the strongest DP Digimon out there, and you can always run over anything and everything in this game, aside from options. Um, and yeah, that's basically uh, Paladin mode right here. Also, just a really cool card in general. So yeah, you guys can, can play test it and let me know. Last but not least, we have one more tamer to consider. We have Mimi right here. She's your memory tamer. But why is she so good is because as long as you have a level 5 or higher green in play, and all your level 5s or higher are green because they're dual colors, you can consistently hatch an egg or push out a rookie, giving you much faster tempo. This is why Mimi is really, really good. Having her in certain matchups, like against Armor Rush and Empire as well, you're always going to be keeping up with their pace. This is why you do want to consider playing that Mimi. And she's also green. And that's really the sole reason why. But yeah, that's basically all the other extra tech cards I would say that you guys can consider adding. Don't add all of them into the deck. I don't recommend that. But pick and choose which ones you really like and play test them one or two at a time together and see what really suits your play style the most. All right, now with the deck profile completed with all the other tech options I can add into your deck, let's show you guys the basic combos. And this is the most fun part. So first off, in the early stages, you want to hatch your uh, Demi Vmon ideally because, you know, you always want to be utilizing with jamming. Digivolve into the Vmon with any inheritable. It really doesn't really matter. And you want to be digivolving into your X Vmon afterwards, passing to your opponent two uh, if you're going first, or you know passing them back. Now, this is when you sort of want three memory as well, which is really crucial. So let's just say you have a Davis, or your opponent passes you the three memory. So now that you're at three memory, this is where we go into the bread and butter combo. You first off want to have a Stingmon in your hand, and as well as a Paeldramon. Ideally, eventually, you might even want to see to have a dragon mode, uh, but we'll get into that just in a bit and as we showcase you the combo. So you move the XVmon up first, and then you would swing into your opponent's security with XVmon with jamming, and then you get to draw one with Demi Vmon because you have jamming. Now you have three memory, you go to zero, you would hard play your Stingmon. Your Stingmon will only cost three because you have a blue Digimon in play, reducing the cost by one. And then afterwards, this is when you do your DNA digivolving. Stacking your X Vmon on top of your Stingmon because you have to follow the procedures of blue on top of green. You now go into your Pale Jamon. This is really insane because your Pale Jamon has a bunch of really juicy inheritables at this point. First off, you have X Vmon giving it jamming. 
You have Vmon once per turn. If you unsuspend, you get to gain a memory. You get to draw one once again because it's a new Digimon of DNA Digivolving. You reset all the uh, inheritables. And then also Stingmon, when attacking, draw one. So you swing with Pelgemon first, use his effect to unsuspend. It has jamming, unsuspended, gain a memory. And because you're attacking with jamming, you draw a card. And then you draw another card with Stingmon. So that's two cards in your, in your hand. And that's the combo. Now you get to swing once more again if you want to. Now you get to still have the jamming. And you still get have jamming and you still get to draw. Uh, you don't get to draw one because that's once per turn. But you do get to draw one from Stingmon. Because Stingmon is not once per turn. So that's already immediately lots of cards that you get to cycle through. And hopefully, let's say, you get into your dragon mode. Now, you can pass your opponent back to three. If they have a memory tamer, that works perfectly because this is then you go into dragon mode. Dragon mode when digivolving. You get to play your XVmon from the bottom and your Stingmon back. Keep in mind, you can also still play this Vmon as well if you would like instead of XVmon. But the reason why you want to usually do this is because now if you have another level 5 in your hand, whether if it be Peljomon or Dino Bmon, you're ready to go for that combo again next turn. So let's just say again your opponent does their thing, pass you to 3, and luckily, you know, you still have this board with you. You would unsuspend right here, and then uh, you would do your stuff, uh, but now moving into the attack. Uh, procedures, XVMon once again can swing in with jamming, uh, Dragon Mode can swing right here as well, pretty beefy, and then you can go into, uh, if you feel really reckless, you can swing in with Stingmon, but often enough it will get deleted from security battle, so you really want to keep your Stingmon because now you have your second Pelgemon to go into. And that's a lot of checks, so you swing again with Pelgemon, unsuspend, and then get to swing again once more. And you get to draw two during the process of doing this too. With the Sting Mountain Inheritable. And that didn't even cost you a single memory. So that's how insane this combo really is. And yeah, that's basically the bread and butter combo. That you want to be rinse and repeating as much as you can. In the early games as quickly as possible. So you can get your advantage and momentum. And you often enough just win the game that way very easily. Now I'm going to show you guys the full power combo. Along with HPD. And this is how insane it actually gets. Let's just say you have your Peljomon already uh, from the previous turn. You made your two checks or whatever checks with it. Your opponent passes you to start at three. And then you do your DigiX stuff if you would like, but you don't really necessarily need to. Uh, and because at the start of your main phase, you do have a blue and green Digimon, this combo does require you having Davis and Ken. So you gain two memory and go to five. And this is gonna where it gets really insane. Peljomon again, once again, swing. Uh, into security with jamming uh, you do gain another memory with vmon let's just say you do or whether you don't it's totally fine uh having an extra memory is great though and then unsuspend draw two cards one for demi v jamming and then one for stingmon so after making the first swing with peljamon this is where you don't want to swing for the second time because now we're going to go into the hpd combo and show you how you bridge all the way that to dragon mode and into fighter mode and then you can do massive amount of checks so what you first want to do was is you want to play hpd so you will suspend your peljomon to pay for the part part of it for the cost and then now you can digivolve into dragon mode for free uh and you want to do it specifically for dragon mode because it costs the most it costs four reducing it by five is just fantastic and then dragon mode will allow you to play your stingmon and your xvmon out right here now you can also use davis ken to suspend them allowing you to unsuspend your dragon mode next up uh, depending on the procedure how you want to play it but let's go into our fighter mode we did pay two only to digivolve our dragon mode into fighter mode now our fighter mode now our fighter mode can bounce one of their digimon with 10,000 dp or less back to their hand and then we also have both blue and green sources underneath so it can do a whole bunch of things which is really great so fighter mode can swing into security, suspend one of the Digimon, effect to unsuspend, and that's it. No inheritables because you already used it for the turn already, and you can swing once again. That's not over yet. You still have four memory to work with, but you don't need memory really. Uh, once again, if you do have a second DNA, let's just say Peljomon once again, or Dino Beamon. Ideally, it will always be Peljomon. You can DNA once again right here and go crazy. So you have a second Peljomon. 
and he can swing two times with this Pelgemon as well. And yeah, and even after that, you still have four memory to work with, and you can do a whole bunch of things. If you're even if you have even the so-called perfect combo, you could even then now go again once again into dragon mode for uh, to go down to zero. Dragon Ball now will spit out both these guys once again. And if you have another DNA to go for it, let's just say you have Dino Beam on this time. You usually will have will see these pieces because you draw so much in the early game. You draw so much in the mid game as well and in the late game throughout the entire game. You, you, you can actually see these combos and you can basically go crazy and go nuts with this, basically. So that's the full potential power combo with the hidden potential discovered. And you, can, you guys can see how crazy and you bring out such a big board just when just by doing this that will be it for my very own deck building strategy and in-depth guide for the impure German deck profile if you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful please give it a like if you have any suggestions recommendations or questions be sure to share it with everyone in the comments down below now if that is not enough imperial content for you guys and you want to still see more i actually played this deck in the most recent regionals and i actually live streamed that as well so you definitely want to watch that and see how this deck actually goes in action the link to the live stream will also be included in the description box down below once again we got lots more bta deck profiles coming real soon so be sure to hit that subscribe button right now and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned as always, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you in the next video. And this is Vault, signing out.